Hello and welcome to this first video presentation slide show where I well try to go a little bit through. This is the first video for theme four supply chain management. Uh, today we'll be talking about retail location. So location strategy or where to place your retail stores is the topic for this small presentation deck. I don't know how long it's going to take, so uh, bear in mind if I drift off a little bit, uh, I should get through it. Uh, but let's start out with this thing about location, because location is not just the physical place. <clears throat> it's also the virtual space that a retailer inhibits in order to present its value proposition and provide an opportunity for its target markets or customers to access its merchandise products and connect with brand values and associations. The reason for this uh, being important is that what our core <coughs> idea as a business is this value proposition. And we need to this, to provide this value, show this value to our customers. Customers need to interact with it somewhere, physically, in a store, in our billboards, or virtually in our web store. And this is where, when we're talking online, search engine optimization, listing in different portals, et cetera, becomes relevant and actually becomes part of the location parameter. Uh, it's also how <coughs> customers associate with our brand values. So if we are, for example, located in a strip mall, well, that will be uh, the association to our brand. So if we have a high-end brand, we would place our store retail location in a high-end location. All right. <coughs> so uh, when we are looking at this retail location or location strategy there's first the uh, shopping parameter why is it that people are shopping for our products would want to interact with our store uh, overall there are two categories there is what's called leisure and entertainment based leisure and entertainment based uh, means that we want to have fun relax uh, hedonistic uh, profit, uh, uh, properties, which I'll come back to in the slides, talking about our retail, <coughs> sorry, uh, our retail de decorations. The other one is the functional and utilitarian uh, parameters. Someone who wants, to, uh, who wants to buy a product wants to be able to find it. So that's also a part of the shopping assessment that we do in our retail strategy. So standing out, we look at our product, uh, our store, is it leisure entertainment based or is it functional utilitarian based? <clears throat> the, the next step in this, and it links up to the previous slides, the space within, uh, are we looking at the functional uh, perspectives, facilitating the purchase, uh, as it says here on the slide, you can find it. Is it the social uh, store, uh, uh, coffee shop, restaurants, etc. where we need to have a different type of space, we need to have a different type of setting, or is it over in the leisure area, cineplex, indoor bowling areas? This is primarily focused in your <coughs> mall settings uh, where these parameters come into place. Uh, the next we will be looking at in our location strategy is the two levels of, uh, of strategy. Uh, the micro level from the perspective of the individual retailer, where will we place our outlet where will we uh, be expecting the customers to come to us or where will we expect to come to the customer 
The other parameter is the macro level, is the role of the government, regional authorities, developers, investment groups, uh, legislators, etc. Examples of that is in Viborg, if we're looking at that, we have a group of investors who want to develop the local retail environment. The government is involved in it. They would like to have a lot of stores, so they have a <coughs> pleasure area in the center of, times, uh, center of town. Uh, so they set up some rules, regulations on where can we open the store and where can we not uh, open the store. That's the macro level. Um, reports say that on the <coughs> macro level, we will within a a few years have a significant fewer number of towns with a central retail development. Uh, if any of you have been to Ranas, you'll know outside in the southern part of uh, town, there is a big mall center and as good as it is and interesting and you have a, almost all the things. It has also killed a lot of the central city retail stores. So you cannot really get that emotion from going shopping in center of brands as you do in deep work. And well, for the marketing students, this is actually the macro level occupation for your semester project, working with the different stores in central deep work. The micro level is where we're <clears throat> looking at individual stores and choosing where to uh, locate yourself. And this is where we go into this portfolio of, of channels. Um, <coughs> first of all, it needs to be shopper centric. We need to place a store where the customers are willing to come. Uh, I could come up with one example of where you would not expect that there is a Michelin star in the northern parts of Sweden. You have to drive for an hour or, or, uh, after flying to a very small uh, airport. And that's not shop aesthetic, but they have a product which is so unique that people is willing to travel that far for it. Um, <clears throat> but what they have done is that they've also recognized that the shoppers are engaging in multiple points of value proposition. So they are listed in different forms uh, in uh, different Google's Michelin guide, uh, for example, where uh, food gourmet uh, enthusiasts look out for the good restaurants. Uh, and <clears throat> they also have some good websites, things like that. So, so you looking at this customer journey and uh, figure out, okay, where do we interact? And the in points of interaction is what you should be considering your locations. Uh, <clears throat> all these channels uh, allow them to engage and in seamlessly and in integrated fashion. And it sounds obvious. But uh, it's not, trust me. It's a place where we find a lot of retailers failing. Uh, a simple thing as uh, having the inventory management system that can tell you how much of a product do we have in the store so we can display that on our online channel so that they can buy it from there is not a simple thing. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's the first step of the location. Next step is actually looking deeper into what's our uh, customers. And we have these uh, six types of European customers that we, we can work with. Uh, the smart uh, shopper in this way, primarily talking technology based, the demanding shopper, uh, the one who so who want the, all the mall shopper uh, who wants to find everything in the same location, old neighborhood uh, shopper, the ones who 
well, I will go to the <coughs> uh, grocery down the street because well, that's the easiest. Uh, and uh, one part of it, the other part of it is, well, I want to support my local community. Uh, next one, materialistic bargain hunter. These are the ones who will go online for deals. It's the ones that will be standing in the changing room in the clothing store, looking up the same product if they can find it cheaper online. Um, it's a, it's a type which is gaining uh, significantly these years uh, because of technology enabling them. Uh, the next one is, ah, sorry, in the materialistic dark and hunter, it's also a very classic Danish type along with the discount shopper. In Denmark, we are still the country with, I said they got the most brochures with, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, with ads for products that uh, you could, should probably maybe not buy in this week. The last one is the discount shopper, and well, uh, things are uh, very, very prone to discounts. I uh, see it in Rayma, Bilka, uh, Netto, Fakta, etc. All the all these discount stores are catering towards these discount uh, shoppers, and depending on which type of shopper you want to reach well in the top ones the technically uh, prone or uh, in the bottom where you have the ones which are prices well you place yourself geographically different places